folks, this is Benny once again with the 94th Aero Claims Aviation Consultant Group. And as we promised, here we are today outside the aircraft, and we're going to show you something unique. Now, people in the business like us, this is mundane to you, kind of routine for those out there in YouTube land that have never seen this. And we be in the kind of company that brings stuff to you to understand. We want to show you how do you check brake wear on a heavy commercial aircraft. We're back out here with our subject aircraft, as we mentioned before, the uh, former Martin Air 767-300, known as PHMCL, the uh, Dutch registry. And we're standing next here to the right-hand main landing gear of the aircraft. We're going to look at the main landing gear real briefly, and then we're going to focus on the brake pads and the pins. And now uh, we're going to show you how the pins are looked at, and this is something that the flight crew would do on their walk around, as well as maintenance. So uh, let's take a look, and uh, like I said, here we are at the gear. And uh, if you guys can remember from our YouTubes from before, we covered this in great depth. Actually, you got to see, and we'll see on all the videos, uh, how this has changed out. Now, the 767, as we see here, has four tires on the main gear. And uh, we're going to swing around, and then we're going to focus on, let's get the camera down here. Uh, right here, we're looking at one of the brake pads, okay? And then, as you'll see, there's one on each tire. And we're going to work our way up to the front here and come back... Uh, so you guys can see there's a brake pad right here and come back over. Now, what we want to show you is the actual pin. Right here, folks, this is the pin, okay? Uh, and then we're going to put a little measuring device here. And you can see, what's the reading on that, sir? Two and a half. We got two and a half inches of pin. That's pretty decent. Um, this is what the flight crews uh, will, will look at their walk around. Now this thing eventually, as the brakes are used and worn down, will come down eventually to a little nub. And that's the indicator that the brakes have to be changed. Now a brake pad, as you see here on this tire, has one in the rear. And one right over here. And this one has considerable length as well. So once again, that is the visual indicator. And uh, we're going to get a close up here. And here's another one, and just out of curiosity, let's see how that that one fares. And what are you, we're looking at how many? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter inches of pin still left. Again, pretty uh, good length of wear still left. Uh, right down here, folks. Let's go down right here. This clamping device, again, and this is for more for the layman. This is the grounding strap. Uh, the aircraft is statically grounded to the earth, uh, to keep from any static buildup, and that's where the connection point is at. And like I said, we'll go around here. And uh, just to show you the other set of brakes, and this one here, this is a good example right here. This little one here is pretty worn down, and we're going to take a little measurement here just to give you guys a reference. It's like one and a quarter inch. That's one and a quarter. So right there, that one is wearing down pretty fast compared to the other ones. And um, as we go along, we'll get to see that they wear, some of them wear evenly, some of them wear in unison, but nonetheless, that is the visual indicator that will let you know when it's time to change a brake on a heavy sampling. Now, what's really unique, we're going to walk up front to the front of the airplane, and most people are under the misunderstanding that commercial aircraft have brakes up in the nose, unfortunately, and that's not true. We'll show you what the nose gear looks like, and you'll see that the nose gear on this aircraft, as all aircrafts, uh, does not have a braking system up in the nose. Therefore, there's no pins, no brake pads, and there you go. It's the, the rim of the tire with the axle. And this space, as you saw back there, will be reserved for the brake pad itself. So uh, that gives you a general idea of what the brakes look like. Um, we're going to go right back aft. I want to show you one more thing that's sort of unique to this airplane, and it's known as the Ram Air Turbine otherwise known as the RAT. Now the RAT is a deployable unit, much like a little windmill, that is deployed in the case of emergency, meaning electrical power is lost either by the AC bus, alternating current, or DC direct current. And uh, we'll show you exactly uh, what it looks like. Right now we have some activity around here. We have some Navy helicopters in the field. So if noise becomes a problem, just bear with us. There's something hovering about here. Anyway, this is the Ram Air Turbine unit on the 767. We're going to back up a little bit and show you the proximity where it is located in the fuselage. There is the panel, and uh, this panel will deploy in flight. The unit comes down, 
and here's the spinners that will be in the direction of the slipstream and it will turn and as it turns it creates this generator and it creates electricity for the minimal amount of equipment to be powered. Uh, one thing that's unique that got pointed out to us, this unit has a manufacture date of 9-11 which is kind of odd but and as we pull out we'll see the compartment unit where it's stowed uh, once it's deployed this thing stays in flight, it, it runs through its, its revolutions, and it constantly produces electricity. So that's something else we wanted to bring to your attention, the Ram Air Turbine known as the RAD. Uh, every commercial airplane has it. Um, it's a must, it's a necessity, sort of a backup. So I hope you found this informative with the brakes and the RAD. And uh, once again, folks, this is Benny with the 94th Aeroclaims Aviation Consulting Group, always in the thick of things here in Jacksonville, Florida.